This 11th of September, again 1.4 million Catalans protested for independence from Spain, making the 2003 anti-Iraq war protests in London look like picnic. The story of this conflict teaches you more about modern politics than any textbook ever could. You have the pragmatists, the romantic idealists, the power politicians and the wannabe messiah. You learn about the tensions between democracy and law and politics and truth. And most importantly, it makes you reflect upon the relationship between the state and the nation. And here's our introduction to it. Hello and welcome, I am Mark and this is El Contexto. In this video, we'll update our last year's analysis of the conflict here in Spain between the central government in Madrid and the regional government in Barcelona. How can you know what's actually true in such an environment of polarization, heated opinion and disinformation? Let's investigate. In these videos, we'll show you how you yourself can try to get an objective view of this conflict. Hello and welcome to this series on the conflict between Spain and Catalonia. In this first video, we'll just give you a quick and brief overview of the situation. Let's first give you the essential context. Catalonia is one of Spain's 17 autonomous communities that came about after the fall of fascism with Spain's transition to democracy until around 81. Since then, the central government has bargained with each autonomous community individually about their relationship, leading to a complicated and asymmetrical devolution of power to autonomous communities. And the currently strong Catalan separatism isn't so much a sudden outburst of romantic nationalism as much as a conflict escalation of exactly these negotiations between the central government in Madrid and the regional government of Catalonia. See, until 2006, social democratic governments, both in Catalonia and in Spain, had renegotiated Catalonia's Statute of Autonomy Agreement. The center-right Partido Popular, however, which defends a very centralist Spanish nationalism, sued before the Constitutional Court that this statute was illegal. The court didn't rule until 2010, when it determined that many clauses of the statute were indeed unconstitutional. In particular, it agreed that Catalonia may call itself a nation, but that the only nation recognized by Spanish law was the Spanish one. Then it stripped a tax conditionality. And here you have to know that Catalonia is one of Spain's net tax contributor to the rest of the country, on the order of 4 to 8 percent of Catalan GDP. Finally, the court ruled that the Catalan language could not be given preferential status before Spanish. Those three, Catalan identity, taxation and the status of the language, especially in schools, are still today the main substantial issues propelling separatism. But since then the conflict has escalated significantly. But it's good to remember that it was after this ruling had reached Catalonia that the first big protest of around one million people took place in Barcelona. Penso que això que ha passat amb el Tribunal Constitucional doncs és un, un atemptat a, a la voluntat dels catalans, tot i que a mi doncs, tampoc vull un estatut perquè jo vull una, una constitució per Catalunya. Si una manifestació com la d'avui doncs, podria ser el principi d'un llarg camí. So it's against this background and with the unfolding economic crisis that Artur Mas and his conservative liberal CIU came to power in Catalonia in 2010 and Mariano Rajoy with his conservative liberal Partido Popular in Spain in 2011. These are the main two political protagonists of this conflict escalation. But it's good to remember that especially behind Mas there is a highly mobilized independence movement active in parliament and in the street. Mas's first election platform was that he'd get a better tax deal, but the central government was unable or unwilling to concede anything. So he had nothing to show at home and decided to call early elections again in 2012. Now he moved towards pushing Catalan's supposed right to decide, that is, a referendum on the independence question. This the central government of course blocked as well. 
And just to be clear, the central government's position is, legally speaking, absolutely correct. Such a right does not exist in Spanish or international law. In the election, CU lost votes and they formed a coalition with the left-wing nationalist Esquerra Republicana de Catalunya on the basis that they'd organize a non-binding popular consultation during the next legislature. The Catalan parliament then declared itself sovereign in January 2013 and that the Catalan people did have a right to decide. The constitutional court, all of a sudden as quick as a bunny, declared any official consultation illegal and thus making any involvement of the regional government illegal too. And thus the consultation was organized by civil society organizations that are, in their own right, powerful political players pushing for independence. And this year, now, Mas again called for early elections because he couldn't deliver his election promise of having a real referendum. Or actually, in his head, this is a form of delivering his promise. Because the central government will block any official vote on independence in Catalonia, Mas now says dressing up regional elections as though they were a referendum, a plebiscite, is the only way to have an official vote on it. Which, legally speaking, is true. The logic here, essentially, is that all involved know that a clear majority voting in an official democratic vote is the only thing that Rajoy can't ignore. That's why Mars pushes that so much and Rajoy blocks that so much. We'll explain the political logic and the outcome of last Sunday's election here in Catalonia in a separate video. For the moment, the overriding logic we think is one of conflict escalation, in which two parties drive apart and develop their own little bubbles in which everything for them makes sense, but they can't talk to each other anymore. Mas was under a lot of pressure because of corruption cases in his party and had a highly mobilized independence movement in his back. He needed something to show, like a tax deal. But Rajoy couldn't give him that something because Spain is in deep economic trouble. Probably not even Pessoa would have renegotiated tax agreements right then. Also, of course, it's Rajoy. It's the leader of PP which defends, again, a very centralist nationalism. So Rajoy has the upper hand. As we explained last year, he refers to the constitution and hides himself behind it and just hopes that their independence movement would quietly die away. But politics isn't about what law is, it's about what law should be. Effectively, he's like a painter who says he can't paint because the canvas is white. We hire politicians to reformulate or defend laws. So okay, Rajoy's position is he doesn't want to reform the constitution and he doesn't want to have a secession referendum for Catalonia. But say so and defend your position. Stand up to people who disagree with you. For a politician to say, I don't want to talk about this one position because it's law, is essentially like a waiter who doesn't want to serve you. It's an insult. At the same time, the independence movement in general, and mass in particular, are selling a remedy that just doesn't work. They are the homeopaths of politics, so to say. So when Mas went to Madrid and Rajoy rejected his tax deal, of course he was also going to reject a consultation and a referendum. Look, Mariano, basically, you have to lower my taxes. Oh, I'm sorry, Arturo, I can't do that. What about no taxes then? Hmm? Independence? So when Mars's demands weren't met, he chose to raise the stakes. And he must have known that this has only one logical conclusion, which is a unilateral declaration of independence that will not be accepted by anybody. Professional politicians in this game are probably all aware that this is a dead end. A unilateral declaration of independence by Catalonia would not be accepted legally in Spain, legally internationally, politically in Spain, politically internationally, it wouldn't have support. In order to have a good or solid referendum on independence, Catalonia needs Spain's agreement. But at what cost do we let politicians indulge in such divisive bubble politics? You know, at the root, this conflict, of course, is very human. It's about how much do you identify with somebody and how much are you willing to put up with. 
If your grandmother asked you for a favor, you'd give her everything you have. But to an anonymous guy in the street, you might not even give a cigarette. The relation is between how much you identify with somebody and how much you're willing to let the relationship cost you. Catalan identity over the last 20 years has become somewhat stronger, but the biggest group until recent years were those who feel equally Spanish and Catalan. This slow rise of Catalan identity has initially not led to an increased support for independence. But then came the economic crisis and the central government's rejection of the statute, the tax negotiations or the referendum. This raised the cost, so to say, of the relationship and the political situation politicized these identities too. It's really 2012 that's the breaking point here. Those saying they feel exclusively Catalan increased from 22 to 34 percent and those with predominantly Catalan identities came to embrace independence in their majority. In a way the political fight is really about winning over these two groups. It was their change of mind that increased a lot the support for independence among Catalans. So that's what we think at its most basic this conflict is about. That while identification and cariño for Spain went down somewhat in the last 20 years, more importantly the cost of the relationship shot up a lot in the last five years. In the next video we'll look at the political logic of this and see the outcomes of last Sunday's elections here in Catalonia. We'll also look at how Artur Mas managed in some senses to protect his party and himself against a wave of anti-elitist politics that rolls over Spain by becoming an independentist. Hey there, my name is Mark. I'm a Swiss social scientist and produce El Contexto, where I explain why the news happens in an impartial way. So far I produced El Contexto with support from my family, but I need to become autonomous. So have a look around and if you like what you see, please consider supporting me via Patreon. There you can pledge a small donation for every video I make. Also, if you're an editor of a news agency, please don't hesitate to contact me at mark at elcontexto.org.